Hey, what's up everybody? Rob Cohey here. Welcome to part six, where we're gonna talk about design reuse. So far in this assembly, I've modeled everything from scratch. Well, you're not likely to do that every time. So in the data panel, what you have the capability to do is find the design that you're gonna copy, right click, choose copy, determine where you're gonna save it to in your projects, uh, and then just hit copy. Now, what it's gonna do is it's gonna, wherever you placed it, it's gonna make a copy, same name and everything. But if I just right click and I choose rename, um, I can name it to what I want. And now what I've done is I've made a unique copy, not a dependent copy. That's a functionality called derive um, that we can get into later. But here I've made a unique copy because I want this part to be the same, but slightly different. And so just like anything else, um, I brought it into the assembly as a reference. I'm gonna use the joint command to position it. Um, I know we haven't spent a lot of time on joints just yet in this tutorial, but hang with me, we will. Um, but I use the joint command to position it where it's going to be. And now I can begin to establish what's going to be different from the original onto the new, what I'm calling the end cap pulley side. And what I need here uh, is I need a, a little cutout uh, for some retaining clips. And, and I'll show you exactly where I'm talking about here in a second, but I'll go ahead, activate, edit in place. Um, I can do all these modifications from the edit in place. Wonderful. Um, but what I can see is that I've got some holes here that I no longer need. So I'll go down to the timeline, I just right click, choose delete. I don't need the sketch anymore, so I'm gonna right click on the sketch and delete that as well. It's just good, good again, CAD discipline in making sure that your models are as clean as possible. So okay, I'm gonna start sketching on this front side of the face. I'll project some geometry going forward. Uh, if, if, you, if we had a shot every time I hit project, we'd be having a heck of a Friday. Um, so I projected that geometry, I turned it into uh, construction geometry, um, grab a circle, go ahead and dimension it here, and you can watch me click through here and make a few mistakes and do some redundant things that, that we all do every now and again. Like, for example, I'm gonna dimension this thing out again, um, but I could have just placed it without dimensioning it and then done the equal, but yeah, yeah, six one half dozen the other, um, but I do want those two two things to be equal because I I want the same size retaining clip um, that's eventually going to be in here. So the problem is where I've sketched isn't exactly where I want the cut to be. Now in other kind of applications, this is kind of a problem. You can see that this is it, the the retaining clips here that I'm pointing out. They're behind the face that I'm sketching. Now, normally you'd have to create a work plane, start the sketch on that, do your slice graphics and all those other things. But within the extrude dialog box, I talked about this a little earlier, click through here, there's more in here than you think. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna choose the option for offset plane, determine how far from the, off, from the sketch plane I want this extrude to start, where I want it to end, and I've got the feature that I want. I mean, that, that beats creating an offset work plane and managing that work plane and, and having them just use the feature for what it's meant to be used for um, by exploring that extrude dialog box a little bit. And you'll find some gems in there. That's it for today. Uh, happy Friday. Um, stay safe. We'll see you next week.